So, on the interior of each machine, we have this aluminum honeycomb bed fixture here. It measures out 18 inches by 32 inches. This is the maximum size material that can be placed into our laser cutters. When you're dealing with the material, you want to make sure the material that you're dealing with will lay completely flat within this um, honeycomb uh, bed fixture here. So we need to make sure it does not overextend past any of these edges. And the reason we do not want it to extend past these edges is because any sort of um, extension past, it's actually going to lift it up onto that ledge. And that little bit of a lift is actually going to mess with the focal point of the material. Now, when you're dealing with the laser, the focal point needs to be precisely uh, measured onto the surface of the material. If you are raising the material past that focal point, you're raising it um, into that laser beam and you're increasing the chance for fire to happen. So this is why materials must be uh, cut down to lay completely flat. So when students get here, you know, they need to make sure the material is within that 32 by 18 area. If it's not, they're going to have to trim the uh, material down before we allow you to cut it. The way these uh, machines work is the files will be generated in Adobe Illustrator or AutoCAD. We deal mainly with Illustrator in this lab. AutoCAD is more of an advanced program. And usually with uh, AutoCAD, we tell people if they want to use it, it's kind of up to them to know how to troubleshoot that stuff. A lot of the staff here is really trained mainly to deal with Illustrator uh, issues. Once those files are created, they're going to load up into either of the two computers here. These are used to plug in the power settings for the laser. Uh, I'll go into more detail on that later, but once those power settings are supplied, they're going to send the file to the machine, and this laser head is going to move around on this two-axis key entry using a reflected beam of energy to focus and burn through the material according to the design you've created. Now, because this is burning through the material, there will be limitations on what materials can be used. So for those uh, limitations, you're actually going to want to check the last page in these packets. We supply an approved materials list. This lets you know what materials are safe as well as what materials we've deemed unsafe or unfit uh, to cut. So at this page here, the bottom of the page here is listing unsafe materials. Now, these materials are unsafe because they're either going to be toxic and deadly to us or they could be uh, damaging and corrosive to the machinery itself. Um, so we've looked through these materials. These are unsafe no matter what. The rest of the materials on that page have been approved. The top section of approved materials, these are safe no matter what. You can buy these Blick resale across the hall or any type of regular store. Uh, we can look at the material and know it's safe to cut. The middle section of materials though, these are approved specialty materials. What these mean are in the past students come up to us and say, hey, can I cut this material? We've uh, obtained the material safety data sheet for that material, looked into the components in there, made sure nothing was toxic, nothing's gonna burn off and then we've deemed the material safe. Now with a lot of the materials in the center section here, because these are um, typically materials that um, are a little bit more uh, difficult to basically identify just by looking at it, we ask people to come to us first. Uh, we'll give them a recommended vendor. When they purchase from that vendor, we recommend that they hang on to the receipt as well. <coughs> this way, if they come in and talk to me, say, hey, I need to cut some linoleum. Uh, where can I go get that? I'll say, okay, you can go buy it from resale or you can buy it from like the McMaster or something. Uh, if they do purchase it, come back later and I'm not present, well, one of the lab workers is still going to ask, where did you buy this material? And we tell them you need to have some sort of evidence that says, hey, I bought it from this. I talked to Mike, he said it was okay, and then they're free to cut. Uh, the reason we stress hanging on to receipts is it's a $50 fine for getting unsafe materials in this lab. So we you know, highly stress that they hang on to any evidence that's going to prove what the material is. Otherwise, there's a good chance that if they're caught cutting it, they're going to get fined. Or if, they're, you know, if we catch it beforehand, they're not going to be able to cut it without that evidence there. Um, let's see, any questions so far? What about UCO? That would probably fit underneath the vinyl. Well, what is it? UCO paper. I've never heard of that, actually. So okay, it's uh, like signage. It's a type of uh, plastic it would, it would probably paper fit that under yeah, vinyl. Yeah. Um, most stuff like that, it, it's, it's toxic to cut. Okay. Luckily though, the school has a uh, vinyl cutter uh, in our service bureau, which is across the hall. So usually it was a signage type material, we tell them to go there, they supply an illustrator file. Um, and it's just a machine that works similar to this, just kind of in two dimensions, feeds uh, the vinyl back and forth, but it's using a uh, blade as opposed to any type of laser system. Oh, okay. So the students still have an option for that. Okay.